Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update from RRG Research for Monday the 30th of May and I'm recording it on Friday morning the 27th. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I'm running RRG Research together with Trevor Neal and we usually take turns every Friday recording this video but Trevor is currently traveling, Trevor is traveling, uh, teaching technical analysis in uh, Nigeria I believe he is these weeks so you got to stick with me for now. Let's start with our usual update and a look at um, how world markets, world indexes have rotated and in front of you is the RRG, the relative rotation graph showing the rotation of a number of major stock market indexes and it's relative to the MSCI world index which is the center of the chart. Um, overall markets are sort of outperforming the MSCI world that's when they're moving to the top right and on the right hand side of the graph and last week I already pointed out that it's primarily the US markets that are on a negative heading and we're talking about the NASDAQ, we're talking about the Russell Growth Index, the Russell Index, we talk about the S&P and to a lesser degree the Dow Jones Industrials. This is the longer term picture as it stands right now and that did not change very much. The good stuff is in Europe, uh, you see that the stocks is really picking up, DAX has just crossed over into the leading quadrant and we got the UK far to the right actually being one of the strongest markets or the strongest market in this, um, in this setup, in this universe. If we dive into the daily RRG, then we see kind of a different picture. Um, we see that the, um, the stuff that's on the right hand side that was predominantly on the right hand side on the weekly RRG has now turned around. This is on a daily basis. So this is what happened since we spoke last. And you can see that these um, uh, Europe, CAC, DAX, the UK, uh, the Nikkei, which was also pretty good on the, uh, on the weekly RRG, have now turned around. And there doesn't mean that they're immediately bad, but they're losing relative momentum. So they're going through some sort of a, um, of a setback. And the one that really stands out is the Russell Index, the RTY, the Russell 2000 Index. That's going against the tide here on the daily. But if we switch quickly back to the weekly, you can see that the Russell growth is, is actually rotating back towards the lagging quarter. That's, that's actually one of the weakest rotations that we can see. So we have a situation here where the long-term picture for Russell uh, is pretty negative and the long-term picture for all these is pretty positive, but they're now moving counter trend. Um, so that is the big framework in which we are working. So, um, stock markets around the world predominantly outperforming the US and the US as I said last week dragging the market down and now uh, Russell the Russell 2000 index stands out. If we take that to individual charts then um, if we quickly look at the S&P 500 so where's the bounce coming from I believe that we're now resting at an important support level for the S&P 500 well this is intermediate support the important support level is around 3500 I would say. However, if you look at the daily, then you can see that there is a, is a bit of a bounce going on. We, um, we tested 3,900, a few wicks of the candles that just dropped below that level. If you look at the RSI, the shorter term RSI, you see a nice positive divergence building up. That means that the downtrend that we currently see in the S&P 500 um, is taking a break, taking a pause. We don't know whether this might be a big turnaround. Maybe we've seen the low, but we're trend following, so we don't know yet. So we gotta, we got to um, take it as it comes to us. And for the time being, when I put this in the bigger framework, I think that we're looking at uh, a recovery within the longer term downtrend. And, it, and that speaks when we look at, the, at this daily chart. Um, you can see that there is a bit of support being built around 3,900. However, there's quite some resistance. Um, here around 4050 that's the low that we saw here in um, May June last year and then there is this uh, old support level that is around the 4100 level previous lows um, you know you can make these support and resistance levels if you if you use a thicker line then it probably got more touch points but you can see that it is like 4130 if I bring it up here it's 4160 that's the kind of range that we're talking about that's overhead resistance and with the market coming down 
I would ex I would say that I I'm going to expect um, renewed supply when the market hits that level when it gets there. So for me, we're still looking at a recovery within a longer term downtrend. Now let's bring that to the uh, to the Russell index to the RTY, and we can see that that has actually dropped a lot further than the S&P 500. It's actually testing. Uh, former peaks that were set in 2018 and 2020. And they're now expected to start acting as support. And it looks as if they're really doing that. However, the, the relative trend is rolling down. That's what you see on the, on the weekly RRG where it's inside the improving quadrant and rolling back down to lagging. That's what you see here. So the big question is um, how strong that bounce is going to be in the, in the Russell 2000, or whether that's a tradable bounce or not. If we do look at the, uh, the daily, then you can see that um, we have a, a, a small higher low being put into place, which is a good thing. And we're now challenging resistance from the peak that was set uh, on May 17, May 17 and May 18. If we take that out, then all of a sudden upside unlocks to levels above 1900. It's about a 100 point uh, upside potential with once we've taken out that high limited downside because that will be short-term support. Again, this is all happening in a longer-term downtrend. And I think you'll agree that when you look at this, that this is not, we don't call this an uptrend. So to wrap this all up, U.S. markets still weak against the rest of the world. Rest of the world still beating the U.S. For the short-term, pattern has flipped. We see some improvement in U.S. growth stocks. We also, if you would look at the ROG for sectors, that's what you would see there. Um, if we concentrate on the Russell 2000, you can see that there is a little bit of upside there. Same with the S&P 500, but it's all taking place within the framework of a longer term downtrend. If we quickly look at the, um, uh, the U.S. growth, the RRG Momentum Plus basket that we have with CMC Markets. And you can see that, it is that, 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 that this basket is actually doing pretty well. It's outperforming uh, the RTY by a mile. And that's because it's heavily weighted towards the energy stocks, uh, the energy sector, which is doing really, really well. So this is how, with RRG, we're able to, to pick out stocks that are um, actually outperforming or relatively easily outperforming the market. Now, which ones are worth looking at, in my view? Obviously, uh, FCX, Freeport McMoran, which is inside the improving quadrant and starting to move towards leading. Is this really a move that is worth looking at? We're going to look at the individual chart. And then if you look at the, uh, the cluster of charts here on the right hand side, the role in relative up transfers, the Russell 2000. The ones that I really uh, want, to, want to focus on is uh, CTRA, that's Cotera Energy. And the reason is because it is actually um, rotating back up. And we do know when a, when a stock or, or a security moves from, improve, from leading into weakening and then runs back up towards leading without hitting lagging, that is a strong rotation. So CTRA uh, is the second one that I want to look at. And then uh, these two look nice. They got nice tails that are a nice RRG heading. So that's Halliburton and uh, Continental Resources. And I, I've picked Halliburton, it could have been CLR. I think Halliburton has a little bit more uh, potential and we're going to look at that in a minute. So start with CTRA and you see that this is actually breaking to new highs uh, and it's following the trend. Um, maybe we've already had a little bit of a run here, but when CTRA drops back to that support level, you probably will get some nice um, entry opportunities with limited downside risk and good upside potential. If you look at Halliburton, you see that this one still needs to uh, move to the, to, the, to the former peak. We're taking out some intermediate resistance levels. That is good, offers opportunities all the way up to 42. And obviously the big kicker comes when uh, 42 can be taken out. And then FCX, which is, that is actually quite interesting um, stock because it is on the far left of the RRG. It's inside the improving quadrant, traveling at a nice heading. That's what we see here. And you can see the RRG lines with the green RS momentum line pushing above 100 and the RS ratio line being dragged higher. Um, so we are, there's still a very good possibility that Freeport McMoran will, will make the turn 
and join the rest of that group into the leading quadrant. But there's one thing that I'm worried about with Freeport McMurrin, and that's, that's the development of this, what's called a rising wedge, and that's a negative pattern. So when we work our way higher and this, this pattern evaporates without a major signal, then the relative trend remains. However, when Freeport McMorrin drops out of this wedge pattern uh, in a couple of days, if that's going to happen, I can't look into the future, then we have a very negative signal for Freeport McMorrin and um, we can see a rotation from improving back down to lagging, which would be very negative. So that's three stocks inside that Russell, 3, that Russell 2000 index that I think are worth looking at. And they're all three inside the CMC uh, RRG Momentum Plus basket. I'm going to wrap it up for this week and I hope to see you again next week, same time, same place.